Okay, so let's recall that we say N is a normal subgroup and we write N with this triangle G. If the coset GN, in other words, the left coset, is equal to the coset NG, in other words, the right coset. And that has to happen for all elements from the group. And in this case, we have a really important construction called the quotient group. And that's given by, we read this G by N or G mod N. So that's the set of all left cosets. And in fact, when this is normal, we have a group structure and the group operation is given as follows. So if you multiply two cosets, XN and YN, you get the coset XYN. Okay, so uh, here what we want to do today is consider the quaternion group. So let's recall that that's made up of 1, negative 1, i, negative i, um, j, negative j, and k, negative k. So there are eight elements, and it satisfies the following rules. So we have i squared equals j squared equals k squared equals negative 1. And then it also satisfies this rule. So um, i times j equals k, so i j equals k, j i equals negative k, and then all the rest of them can be gotten by this picture. And so we read this picture in the clockwise orientation. So if we go in the direction of the arrows, we uh, pick up a positive sign. So i times j is equal to k, just like I wrote up there. Um, but j times i is equal to negative k because I went opposite the arrows. And then likewise, k times j is i, j, sorry, k times i is j, and then if you go backwards, you get the negative ones. And then also, you can check that in this case, i times j times k is equal to negative 1. So let's look at the subgroup structure of this group. So we know this is a group of eight elements, which means uh, the possible orders of subgroups are 4 and 2 because those are all the divisors of 8 and you get these 4 which are cyclic subgroups generated by i, by j, and by k and then you also get a cyclic subgroup of order 2 generated by negative 1 and then you get the trivial group which is a group of order 1 down there at the bottom. So all of these are order 4, this one's order 2, order 1. And let's just remind ourselves that the cyclic subgroup generated by i is going to be made up of four elements 1, i, minus 1, and then minus i. So that's i to the 0, i to the 1, i squared, and then i cubed. And then i to the 4th is going to be back to 1. And then we'll have similar constructions for J and K. So what we want to check is which of these subgroups are normal and then what are the quotient groups. So let's look at the subgroup I and see if that's normal. So in order to figure out if it's normal or not we need to look at is are the right cosets equal to the left cosets? We don't need to check for any elements in I because any coset is going to be equal to the subgroup itself. So we'll take elements outside of I, like for example J or K. So let's take the coset J times the cyclic subgroup I. So that's going to be the coset J, and then we can write these out 1I uh, minus 1 and then minus I. So let's see what we get there. So j times 1 is j, and then j times i is negative k because we have to go in reverse. And then j times negative 1 is negative j, and then j times negative i is going to be positive k. So you can check that. That's easy to check. Okay, great. So we get j minus k minus j and k. Okay, good. Now let's look at the right coset. So let's look at i, j to the right. So notice that's going to be equal to the coset 1, i, minus 1, minus i, multiplied by j to the right. So here we're going to get j, and then i times j is k, minus 1 times j is minus j, and then minus i times j is going to be minus k. And notice that, yes, these are indeed the same. So notice we have our element uh, 
minus k here and minus k here. We have our element k here and k here, and then the j and the minus j is, are kind of obvious as well. Okay, so this left coset is equal to this right coset, and in fact, we're done because we know that q8 is generated by two elements, i and j. And it's easy to check that it's generated by those two elements. Notice that um, the subgroup generated by i is going to be 1 minus 1 i and minus i. The subgroup generated by j is going to give us j and minus j. But then if we combine i with j, we can get k and minus k. So that's the whole group. And now we've checked that the left cosets are equal to the right cosets for all of the generators in the group. So it follows that this cyclic subgroup I is indeed a normal subgroup of Q8. Okay, good. I'll clean up the board and then we'll find out what the quotient group is. Okay, so now let's look at the quotient group. So we'll take Q8 mod, the cyclic subgroup generated by I. So we know Q8 has eight elements. That cyclic subgroup has four elements. So eight divided by four is two, so we expect two cosets. So one is the subgroup itself, I, and then the other one we can take as the left coset J times I. Okay, great. Now let's do some multiplication here. Notice that if we make a multiplication table, we need to put those two cosets in it. So here we have i, here we have ji, good. And then here we think that we have an invisible one out here, meaning that we have the identity element. So that means if you combine anything with the identity, you should get back to what you started with. So I can fill in all of my entries except for one from that. Now let's fill in the last entry. So using the group law in normal in uh, quotient groups, we get that this should be j squared times uh, the subgroup, in other words, that coset, but j squared is equal to negative 1 times i, so in, a, in other words, the coset with representative negative 1, but now let's look at this. The coset with re representative negative 1 is going to be the same thing as the group itself because negative 1 is in fact an element from the group. Great. So that means that this is equal to i itself. And how do we know that? Well, there's this fact that says that the coset n n is just equal to the coset n itself. And that is for all n that come from that normal subgroup. That's easy to check. Okay, great. So in other words, uh, we have a Cayley table which looks a lot like the Cayley table for Z2. And in fact, this is exactly equal to Z2 isomorphically. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board and then we'll look at the cyclic subgroup generated by minus 1. Okay, so now we're going to look at the cyclic subgroup generated by minus 1. We're skipping the ones generated by j and k because that's exactly the same calculation as the one generated by i. Okay, so let's uh, recall that this cyclic subgroup is going to only have two elements, 1 and negative 1. And also, notice that both of those elements commute with everything in the group. So, this is actually a subgroup of the center of Q8. It's in fact the center of Q8, but we won't prove that, that, that it's the center, but it is a subgroup of the center. And since everything commutes with this, then it follows immediately that all the left cosets are equal to right cosets. We can do that with a little calculation. Notice um, the coset with re representative i is going to be equal to i negative i, but that's exactly equal to the right coset with that representative. And you can do that for any element from Q8. Okay, good. So that means, yes, this is a normal subgroup. I can finish that off into a triangle. And now we can look at the quotient structure. 
Okay, good. So this has two elements, which means we need to have four cosets. It's eight divided by two. And so we'll have a coset given by the subgroup itself. And then we'll have one each for I, J, and um, K. Good. And now let's notice uh, what we get here. Let's look at the order of all of these elements. So notice if you take this element and you square it, you'll get negative one times the subgroup generated by negative one. But by our observation over here, that's going to be equal to uh, the subgroup itself. So in other words, this thing has order two. And then likewise, this thing has order two. In other words, if you combine that with itself, you'll also get the identity. And then finally, this guy right here also has order two. If you combine that thing with itself, you get the identity. So every element in this group has order two except for the identity, which is um, order one, obviously. So that makes this uh, impossible for it to be a cyclic group of order four, which means it has to be a non-cyclic group of order four, of which there's only one Z2 cross Z2. And you might say, well, what is the isomorphism that we could take? We could take this thing, goes to the ordered pair zero, zero. This, this one could go to the ordered pair one, zero. This one could go to the ordered pair 0, 1, and then this one could go to the ordered pair 1, 1. And it's easy to check that this is an isomorphism. So I'll leave it for you to do that, but notice that if you combine I um, and J in their coset form, you will get K. And so that means, uh, th and that works with combining this ordered pair and this ordered pair to get the ordered pair 1, 1. And you might say, well, but this doesn't commute. So what if you do J first and then I? Well, notice by this rule up here, you'll get the coset negative K, but the coset negative K is equal to the coset K because we can just extract the negative one and pull it into the subgroup. Okay, great. So this is a good uh, deep dive on all of the subgroups of the quaternion group.